Welcome everyone to the Mysterious Challenger Cup Day 2 with me, Calm Lizzie, and your other host, Raven. Raven, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited for the rest of these games because they've uh, got a nice, as always, and something we've been seeing recently with these open tournaments, a nice mix of you know established, well-known players versus maybe some, some players that are a bit lesser known and looking for that break. Absolutely. If you're just joining us today, we started yesterday with 500 players, 512 players, a 512-man bracket, and we're waiting our way down to just one win. There's only one prize on offer here today. It is entry to the $30,000 True Silver Championship. Flights, travel, accommodation, everything you need to get here. A VIP package to uh, take your place. Apparently being a pro player and getting invited and getting flown out to events, that's what we're giving one person the chance to experience. And there are a couple of those pro players left in here. Uh, we're going to see one of them coming up in just a minute. Spo Hoy is still in here as well. But also a lot of, uh, as you say, a lot of unknown players will be getting that big chance. Yeah, there's even some uh, some players that sort of, uh, I want to say like half known, but known uh, maybe around the UK scene. For example, Ben is in a, you know, a lot of, you've probably seen him in a lot of stream uh Watching some streams and stuff like that, so he's around, just play quite a bit. So uh, you know, it's even players like that making a making a bit of a name for themselves in this tournament at least. There's also players like Astrogation as well, who's played in a lot of tournaments, who's yet to have kind of that breakthrough performance and be able to come out on top of a single elimination cup like this and then go on to the thirty thousand dollar tournament would be a, a huge achievement for players like that. Yeah, exactly, and even just um, you know. What's really big as well is for the players that are outside the UK. I mean, uh, at iSeries, the True Silver Championship, the event is in Birmingham, so it's not too horrendous to travel to from the UK. Obviously, nice to be paid and, uh, you know, like, get your hotel and everything sorted, but for anyone who's actually living abroad from the UK, it's actually a pretty big deal because suddenly, you know, there's flights involved and everything like that. So really good for them to just get, get over for free and, uh, you know, try to hand out a pretty big tournament. Absolutely, and you know, we saw last time Visual, one of our qualifiers from the, the UK qualifier for the first True Silver Championship, he made it all the way to the top four, got himself a, a decent amount of prize money for it as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, not too sure what he's been doing recently, if he's still playing so much, but uh, but yeah, he's a uh, pretty good performance by him overall. And, uh, lost, pretty lost yesterday. <laughs> oh, did he lose? Yeah, okay. Um, he, well, you know, he made it last time, so that's a pretty big achievement. <laughs> he had his shot. Uh, yeah. Well, we, I do have a lot of big name players coming over this time, of course, but this time there's no qualifier in group stage, no invites, it's completely open for 43 Hearthstone Championship Tour points. Of course, if you don't win this tournament or you're already out, you can still come along to the Insomnia 57 in Birmingham at the end of this month and you can enter the Open Swiss and uh, there's like 200 spots available. Everyone starts from the same place, even the person who wins this tournament. So uh, you all have an equal shot of the first prize in the $30,000 prize pool and it was RDU who won last time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, some really crazy games in the fact you know, like the, probably the top top eight or so last time, and some crazy, crazy games from out of here as well. But uh, but yeah, and also actually, if you turn up and play in the Swiss and don't make it through the Swiss stage onto the uh, the top sixteen or whatever the cut's going to be, then uh, there's actually a secondary cup going on on the Saturday and Sunday as well, which is a uh, I think it's a two thousand uh, dollar two thousand pound two thousand pound tournament, so which um, you know dollars. like. Yeah, pretty much everyone that uh, doesn't get in and through the Swiss plays in that tournament. So, you know, you can still make some pretty good cash uh, if you turn up and play. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's, we're just getting these guys into their game. They're uh, just about to start for us here. Uh, once again, apologies. Uh, that I'm running the stream as well as hosting this as well. So trying to organize these players. Uh, trying to organize Hearthstone players a little bit like herding cats or, in fact, herding dogs, uh, Raven, from your own experience. Yeah, they were fine, though. They weren't that bad last night. They sure. were fine. You're not going to have to run off to deal with any animal emergencies this evening. No, I'm uh, all alone tonight, unfortunately. Good. But hey. Good. I mean, I, I, see, I said last night, my, my cat will probably cause trouble now, knowing... knowing Good. Her. That's, uh, that will happen. We get rid of the dogs, and we'll swap the dogs for, for something else. I say we're just waiting for these players to get into their matches, but uh, yeah, I mean, last time we had players like Life Coach, Ty Sixo... Uh, all the SK Gaming guys, Trump was over for the last race over championship, so you never know who's going to show up, and I'm assuming it will be a pretty star-studded affair once again. You'd expect most of the top European pros to, to come over. Yeah, and even so, uh, potentially some from uh, you know over the pond, because the thing is, there's that many HCT points uh, on offer 
for, for like the, the top places that you know actually winning one of these tournaments or even getting second like almost guarantees you to you know straight into the prelims like almost it's not 100 percent of course until we see the final points of everyone but to get into that top 128 when you're getting something like 15 points or 10 points or eight points for you know a place in this tournament then it you know it almost uh, guarantees it straight away so it's a pretty big deal for these guys yeah, just uh, let me to poke Spo. I, th I, th I there's some confusion over his screenshots, uh, which I'm trying to sort out. Okay, but uh, yeah, so feel free to, to fill for me here. <laughs> yeah, so the first game is going to be Spo versus Swifty. Uh, Swifty uh, currently resides in the UK, I believe, and uh, Spo is a member of SK Gaming, which we spoke about briefly yesterday. We casted a then we casted a freaky game for uh, he's also from SK and Powder also. Um, but suppose yet another member of Team SK, pretty uh, pretty decent sized team, but actually uh, you know super high quality guys, and uh, they're really sort of hungry to prove that they're the best team in Hearthstone this year, 100%. With uh, Powder recently getting top four at PGL the other weekend, that was uh, hosting Romania, and then um, AK Wonder actually winning IEM, I think that was last weekend. So uh, you know already th this team started putting results on the table, and I'm pretty sure that regardless of how good uh, Spo does in this tournament. Uh, in terms of getting the travel, he's probably going to end up coming over regardless because you know he came over last time with his uh, with the, most of his team, and I have no doubts he'll make the trip again. Yeah, I think the whole the whole crew were over last time. I was AK Wonder. I think he's likely to be there again, having just won the uh, the Katowice tournament. All right, so we are into the game here. Let me just there we go. So we have the Druid for Spo against the Priest of Swifty starting us off here. Yep. And uh, the Druid looks like it's pretty standard, the Priest looks like it's pretty standard control Priest, you know, from what we can see in the opening hands. Um, I'd be surprised if uh, Spo doesn't keep, like, a Wrath and Innovate and a Shredder. Probably throw the second Wrath, but holding onto one's really good just to deal with it, like, Cleric early on. Because you just remove it straight from the game, and it's actually difficult for the Priest to get a lot of value from the Cleric that early on in the first, like, turn or so. Yep, I'm just uh, checking the class of these two players. So we have Warrior, Warlock, and Druid for Spo, and Paladin, Priest, and Druid for Swifty. So both playing Druid, which is not too much of a surprise. We definitely saw Druid uh, dominating yesterday. Um, just want to talk about the Priest for, quickly for a second. This card, which uh, not necessarily standard in all Priests, but is seeing a lot of play right now. Excavated Evil. Yeah, it's a really interesting one. We saw a couple of guys uh, at the PGL tournament take uh, take Excavated Evil, and it's um, it's just basically this deck is built to just destroy aggro. Um, by the looks of things, with the Wild Pyro, you know, we can see that there's the Circle of Healing, and so on. And Excavated Evil is just one more card that does it. And the good thing is the drawback against aggro, um, of like uh, giving them the card in the deck, is actually a positive because you give them a pretty dead card. Um, because Excavated Evil isn't that good versus Priest normally, and also you like you, you negate the card draw, and they don't want to wipe their own board, which they're gonna you know any aggro decks are normally gonna want to build up. So pretty good card, um, and he has gone with the Beast as a pick, which is uh, pretty cool actually. Yeah, that's interesting. It's uh, it was a difficult choice. I think the Explosive Sheep wasn't necessarily gonna get a lot of work done. Uh, and it was guess it was which of the two bigger ones did you think you wanted to take? And the museum curator, along with uh, Entomb, is the reason why these control priest decks, a lot of them tend to top out at Cabal Shadow Priest and uh, Justicar now, because you don't need to play any big threats in your deck yourself, because you can add those as cards beyond thirty through a pair of Entombs and a pair of museum curators as well. Yeah, exactly. And and you know what? Like the museum curator is although a one two body isn't fantastic, trades pretty well versus aggro, but also almost all the death rattle cards are really powerful for like an additional slot in your deck. So it's pretty good. But Spo having a couple of pretty good turns himself, he does uh, go shredder into uh he did innovate either shredder and then uh, to get up pretty early, he manages to go into a uh, coin keep of the grove to remove the wild pyro. And now it's whether he chooses to trade. I think there's no reason not to trade here because of cards like Velen's Chosen. Um, but it looks like he might go for a slightly more aggressive stance. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, though. I think, from my, from memory, the kind of priest that runs things like Double Light Bomb and Excavated Evil generally cuts at least one Velen's Chosen, if not both Velen's Chosens. Yeah. I think uh, I think that just the benefit of trading is that if he does have a Velen's Chosen, then that's bad. <laughs> but then, like, you lose four damage to face, but clear, clear the board, and it's not like putting your minion on two health is a problem in terms of, like, holding over or anything like that. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's still pretty fine here. 
Alright, so the Death Lord coming down for Swifty, and Spool's going to be looking for an answer to that. Hoping for something like a Wrath to get picked up. Doesn't get anything, so he's not going to be able to deal with it this turn. I guess he just slams the second Shredder. Yeah, it's whether he chooses uh, to attack. Um, hmm. I mean, you tra if you're going to attack, you trade him with a Shredder first, I think. Um, but he could quite easily just play Shredder and then pass. Because the thing is, like attacking in something like Death Lord when you can't kill it, you know, cards like Circle of Healing, or even just um, even just in a heal from the priest can you know, like, negate a lot of damage. Whereas if they heal, uh, if they have to attack themselves, then heal, then that's a good chunk of their turn done. Yeah, exactly. You're going to lose the first part of this Shredder uh, and two health on the Keeper of the Grove, and then even just, as you say, the hero power could come down and negate the damage from the, the Keeper of the Grove. So this is interesting from Spo. Like, I, I, I think you just pay the Shredder and probably pass. Though I guess th there's an argument that Swifty could just trade the Shredder and heal anyway, so you might as well. Yeah, well, it's a tough one, because what you do is, like, you, he then gains extra damage if you attack this turn, because then the Death Lord sort of attack twice. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the reasoning to hold off. The Flash but, uh, is a pretty nice pickup. Yeah, definitely. And this is one of the things where now he can actually kill off that Shredder if he wants, and then he can quite easily play Cleric Flash heal. But it's uh, interesting that he could have actually just gone with Excavated Evil and see what popped out the Shredders. All right, well, let's see... Oh, and he gets shit. two card draws from this cleric, which is pretty nice, if he wants to flash heal, but he might actually hold on to it. Yeah, th this is okay. The mini bot coming out for Spo is actually pretty powerful. It's one of the, one of the definitely one of the better two drops that you can get out of a, uh, out of a shredder. And the the Sylvanas coming out for Spo is going to be a little bit disappointing because I think, in terms of targets to come off the Death Lord, Thoris and, and Sylvanas were probably the top two in the deck. You don't really want to see Ancient of Lore. You don't really want to see. You okay with Doctor Boom? There it is. <laughs> Called yeah. it. But, uh, you know, you don't get the boom boss that way. So it's okay because you get 7-7, seven, seven, but, you know, you, you lose a little bit. Yeah, but this is also pretty scary because you've gained the Dr. Boom into the Light Bomb turn. And obviously we can see that he has Light Bomb. But even if he didn't, you know, like, we remove that information. You don't really want to have a board that, you know, has a, just a 7-7 seven, seven on that's not attacked without boom bots on a turn where Light Bomb is a possibility. So um, I would be... Pretty amazed if we don't see Light Bomb this turn, just because it completely negates the Doctor Boom. Yeah, it's difficult though because you do have the Beast and the Justicar in hand. We see an Elise there in the Priest for Swifty. So yeah, once again, you talk. I was talking earlier about how you don't need to put big minions in your deck because you can create them later. Uh, there's another good example of that with the the Elise. Yeah, hundred oh. percent. And the, what what this deck aims to do is one, it's really good versus aggro in terms of all the AOE and board play. Um, but also versus like in the more control matchups, you do have cards like uh, True Heart and Elise that you know all all these small AOE and the little sort of uh, what's the word I'm looking for the little like conditional spells you have as priest to deal with certain situations can be replaced by the legendary cards. So uh, the Elise is definitely uh, pretty good in this deck. Yeah, when you end up with things like Excavated Evil and Flash Heal and Power exactly. Shield that you don't really want in the late game necessarily, they can really be helpful. Um, this is an interesting turn for Spo here. He has just seen one light bomb, so a big threat like a Sylvanas or Thorson would be good here. But there is a second light bomb that can come down. Mm. It's a tough one though because you weigh up uh, w whether it's worth because he does have uh, True Heart in hand. So maybe it's better to just put True Heart on the board, bait out a little bit more from the Druid because this, although it's a light, a good light bomb turn, like playing just one minion, well. Sylvanas just that doesn't matter too much yeah because Sylvanas one can't steal the true heart unless there's some weird stuff that happens but also you're not too bothered anyway because you have light bomb next turn so I would actually like to get true heart on board here and it looks like Swifty is is thinking about it whether he commits to it I don't know but I just feel like you're taking what five seven eight, you're taking nine which is quite a lot but if you play true heart then you have potential nine healing next turn because you have that flash heal. There's double flash heal in hand, so you could do you could do Absolutely. fourteen heal, fourteen heal. Yeah. You could heal the entire value of a combo. Exactly. So I I, I kind of like just getting true out down because the problem is if he light bombs and then bigger minions come down next turn, but then he's true heighten again. You know, it it needs to come down at some point, and this is probably the safest turn uh, at at this point in the match. Yeah, I, I like it. I think for all the reasons you discussed, obviously. It feels kind of bad to play minions when there's a Sylvanas on the board, but if you're just playing one, it doesn't really have that much of an impact. Druid mm. of the Claw is a nice pickup for Spo here because it means, from his point of view, he can protect his Sylvanas and then uh, avoid it getting traded off, for example, just by this Justicar on its own. 
Yeah. Uh, obviously, we see there's a second light bomb, so that would be uh, a bit of an. That would actually cause a bit of an issue for Swift. He'd have to trade away the Justicar and then light bomb. Yeah, I actually quite like uh, Emperor here because what Emperor will do is it reduces um, one a combo piece. Uh, also the shade down to two, which is easy to squeeze in. But quite importantly, next turn he can go Druid of the Claw and Azure Drake, um, you know, to rebuild the board up if it gets AoE'd. Can he? You can do Druid. Of, yeah, sorry, Druid of the Claw and Azure Drake. I thought we were talking about the ancient. I was looking yeah. at the ancient. Come on, Callum. Come on. First game of the day. Just waking up. So now I imagine we are going to see the two. Uh, well, you know what? He could just go face and not care. Oh, he does trade. Okay. Yeah, because he could have pushed face and just threatened like lethal, you know, the following turn if the board isn't answered. I imagine now this almost just has to force out a light bomb. Um, you can't really leave ten on board, uh, even though he's not seen the Thorison. So unless there's an, a second innovate coming out with Spo, then there won't be any combo next turn. But still, like when a ten damage has happened and it puts the priest to eleven, then suddenly you know it starts to get a little bit scary, especially if the minion Sylvanas as well. Yeah, it's it, you're right. I think you do need to do the light bomb here just because the Sylvanas is there as well. Removes those th those two big threats. Yeah, I think just light bomb hero power is the only real way to go here. Is there any merit in light bomb double flash heal to heal yourself up to thirty? No, because you can't die this turn, so you may as well use the hero power while you can, um, because you just heal up to twenty five anyway. So you know, twenty five may as well be thirty next turn. Yeah, uh, because you know there's no big combo coming to actually kill you off. The burst healing in this priest is really oh. interesting. He's actually just going to look at dropping the beast. This is kind of interesting, just because, like, let me think. Oh, is he actually... So he doesn't lose to combo here. I think he's 1-R. Well, there's not... You can't have a combo anyway, because there's no... Yeah, uh, I'm saying if there was a second innovate. So I was what, working out whether he just straight up lost to an innovate combo with this play. 14 plus 8 is 21. So he could do Druid of the Claw Savage on this turn, which would be 4 off. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a I, little bit of a ballsy play. I was going to say, I like the burst healing from the priest in this matchup, the double flash heal, because you, I guess the aim is to keep yourself frustratingly out of range to the point where the druid decides that you can't kill you in one turn and tries to do it over two turns, and then you just double flash heal. Oh, this is so good, though, because what this does now is he Walks can, if he bomb. wants, steal. The, the reason the beast was played is that if Sylvanas steals it, then he light bombs and gets the 3-3 three, three back. But this low theft just locks out all the options, and you know what? The... Here's the punish for not playing light bomb because now he can't play anything that's an AOE. Yeah, can't play the light bomb at all anymore. So, so. Do, well, he just has to flash heal himself and hope, but we can see already it's not enough. So playing a little bit, a little bit risky with the with the beast there and, and not uh, just clearing the board off of ten damage because he just soaked ten damage that he didn't particularly need to. Um, but yeah, it's uh, definitely feeling a little bit rough and there's just a. Uh, not a lot he can do about it right about now. He's looking for flash. He's going to do a six mana flash heal, but I think that is very much lethal from Spell on the backswing with the combo. There's what? There's 13 on the board, plus 14, 27, plus 8. That is 35 damage, which is more than enough to win you a game of Hearthstone. And as yep. we saw so many times last night, Spell with the Druid is going to jump out to a 1 0 lead. Yeah, and the thing as well is this is the, the issue of leaving the two 5 fives up. He just took, what, uh, 24 damage from those 5-5s five over the course of two turns? Yeah, being a little so, bit like, too greedy and not going for a light bomb. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. But hey-ho, um, Spo does go 1-0 up, so it's good for him. He, this is his last hero standing, so he keeps hold of his druid. And uh, and has to, you know, Swifty has to change away from his priest. Yeah, so Swifty has the paladin and his own druid. Uh, we, I guess we assume it's a secret paladin, but we might see something different. But assuming it's a secret paladin... Unless you have a lot of tech which wins you the Druid Mirror, I think you probably you have to go with the Paladin, right? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a tough one. I think I would... Uh, if it's Secret Paladin, it's more like... Uh, if it was Agro Paladin, I would go Agro Paladin 100%. Yeah. If it's Secret Paladin, yeah, it's okay. Um, I would 50-50 the Druid if it was me, but... Um, but yeah. What, what's the rest of Spo's lineup, sorry? Spo has the Warlock and Warrior. Okay. Yeah, because this is where Last Hero Standing is very different from Conquest, where... So now the Paladin's locked in. If Swifty gets this win, then Spo just locks in the Warrior and then sort of should win, you know, on, on mm. pure matchup basis. Um, and then, you know, Spo's ahead in the counter and he has his Warlock for the final game. But, um, yeah, I mean, either pick's fine, to be honest, at this point. There's nothing that particularly stretches out as a, a definite pick choice for Swifty. 
All right, so the shade in the opening hand here for Spo as well as both pieces of the combo. I, do you keep the shade in this matchup, or are you mulliganing aggressively for uh, Living Roots, Wrath, Keeper of the Grove? You, uh, it's a tough one. I mean, I would probably keep the shade, because the likelihood of your hero power in turn two is pretty high. Uh, so then you just go straight into shade afterwards. Um, so now he has three, four, five. He just doesn't have anything beforehand. Yeah, he just has nothing to cope with the double two drop monster for battle that's going to come in from his opponent. Oh my god, if he top decks Innovate, he has like Shredder, Shade, Shredder. Which is ridiculous. Uh, it's Swift, not Innovate. Swifty going to not coin the 2 drop there, just go for the hero power. Yeah, I think uh, I think a, a lot of people coin out 2 drops quite aggressively, and it might actually punish them a lot of the time, because the issue is, um, if you coin out the 2 drop, and then your follow up is just like, juggler. Mm -hmm. And then it just gets wrath, and then wrath again. Or you know what I mean? Like the coin doesn't have too much of an impact. Whereas if you have a turn one play, uh, already we can see Swifty's overall plan is to get Avenge down, go for the juggler, hope it survives, and then go for Muster. Oh my God, this Muster! And then the thing is with Muster for battle, unless a swipe comes down, the the Avenge is almost certainly to uh, you know to. Oh. Well, let's see if he can kill this shade here. Spill went for the greedy play rather than killing the with, with killing the juggler with the wrath. There's the punish! Second juggle into the shade. And that's pretty heartbreaking for Spo. And now he's going to look at the Wrath on the Knife Juggler, which he could have done on turn 3, but he's going to proc the Avenge. So definitely a worse situation, but he's, yeah, he's actually just going to go into the Shredder. And I guess Spo sticking to his game plan here. And I think that's kind of how you have to win this matchup, when you're sli even slightly on the back foot here, is just hope that you can curve out slightly better than your opponent. Yeah, and the problem is, like, if he went for Wrath, it's too slow. Like, he's still not putting a minion on the board. Next turn, the, you've got to imagine the Paladin's going to drop a, either a Shredder of his own, a Blessing of Kings, you know, more minions. So killing one minion at this point does nothing. You need to put something on the board yourself and try and battle. But Swifty has one hell of an opening. And when there's no swipe from Spo, uh, this is where Druid just gets run over sometimes. Yeah, and the double knife juggler. Wait, now the Noble Sacrifice is up as well. Does he trade? Yeah, he's going to trade all... Oh. No, this is right. Because okay. the Noble Sacrifice is up. Yeah. No, I, I was just wondering if he was going to kill the first part of the Shredder or leave it for the Noble Sac. Yeah, you let the Noble Sacrifice uh, soak it because it either soaks it or it forces a hero power from the Druid. And if the Druid hero power is on five mana, then what's three mana's worth of minion or spell going to do to this board? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So the Keeper of the Grove top deck is nice for Spo. It's going to help him do a little bit more this turn. Yeah, it's tough. The problem is with Keeper of the Grove again. You can keep of the Grove, but that's it. So I actually just think Spo might just be dead. I, I think he is just dead, to be honest. Because how does he clear this board? He can clear... If he wants, he can Wrath and Hero Power and use the Shredder attack. So he can kill two minions. So a Juggler and a 1-1. One, one. Uh, or a, a, he can kill both the Jugglers. Um, Depend uh, yeah, and, and then you still got a one, two one ones, and a mini ball, and nothing on your side. Of the and board. an avenge. Oh yeah, the avenge. And the avenge. Oh my god, goes on the mini bot. Uh, so nothing's going right here for spell whatsoever. Yeah. So he's gonna take seven, eight next turn. He's gonna be down to sixteen. Even the juggle goes. He's to gonna be down to fifteen so. now. <laughs> Let's see. It's a good drop off the shredder That's though. That's not bad. Um, you know, it's a, a three falls looking pretty reasonable uh, most of the time, but this uh, this is still pretty rough. I'm just trying to work out what the play is here. He probably just buffs one of his one ones into a three three, drops the secret keeper, and just smocks. He could just trade if he wants to, but I kind of like the value of the divine shield. Yeah, thing. especially when it's got four health, because you're potentially playing into swipe to, on your big minion there. So yeah, yeah, I think that you value the divine shield pretty highly at this point. Yeah, and the, and the thing as well is with that with with not trading, you are open to a silence. But again, if he silences with Keeper of the Grove, he just has two mana left. You know, like what's he actually going to do? Oh, he's going to conk and trade the two one ones in or one 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 and the weapon, which is okay. Sort of a, a middle ground option, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't mind this. I mean, Consecrate doesn't necessarily get a huge amount of value against Druid, so I like using it that way to just clear up that minion, keep your Divine Shield. And a little bit more board presence as well. Yeah, and also what this does is this. Um, although he would have had more power on the board with the uh, Keeper of Alderman, 
this saves the Keeper of Older Men in case, you know, like, Ancient of War or a Druid of the Claw gets uh, brought out and he can just bring it right down to a 3-3 and uh, kill it off there. Yeah. So, Spoke can kill off one of these minions here and leave himself with a minimum of four damage coming on the backswing, which will go up to six. So any damage for Swifty that you can play along with the Keeper is lethal. Uh, Blessing of Kings would be lethal. True Silver would be lethal? If he doesn't mm -hmm. click the 2-2. Two -two. Uh, yes. Uh, no, yeah, even without. Yeah, because yeah, you'd have the one, the two one ones. Oh, no. True Silver wouldn't be lethal. No, yeah, because you couldn't hit with the weapon. He kills the 2-2. Yeah, two -two. If you kill the 2-2 two -two and then you, rate, you cover over the weapon, obviously, yeah. It's not, true Silver's not lethal. So he's going to take out the Secret Keeper, which is an interesting choice, uh, purely because you've already seen so many secrets already from Swifty. You probably don't expect more. Um, and I do believe he floated some mana last turn. I might be wrong. Um, so it's definitely interesting. But the buff coming down to the 3-3, three, three, so that's 5, puts him to 1. And uh, this is going to be a rough for Spo to try and deal with. Yeah, he needs a full board clear here. Keeper of the Grove. So is there, what can you do with Force of Nature? Don't think there's any way to do it. You can play the Taunt. And then Hero Power. So that puts you up to two. He, he has to Taunt Hero Power but not attack anything with his face. Yeah. He's well, going to take the one damage from the Secret Keeper. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing he can kill with his face. So he might as well not attack anyway and just take it as a heal. Um, and then there's six. I think there's enough. Yeah, so you, you you stay alive just by one this way. So yep. you kill the 2-2, two, two, the 2-3 two, attacks go into the 4-6, and then the Secret Keeper can do one damage. So any damage off the top for Swifty... <laughs> I mean, Mysterious Challenger are also good. Yeah, I mean, he's used a lot of secrets, though. How many are going to come out? Whoa! Oh, okay. okay, he used the perfect volume of uh, secrets, see. I guess. Yeah, so there's Repent... Yeah, because we saw one Avenger and one Noble Sack. Ah, okay. I thought we saw two noble sacrifice. No, so I'm, I'm got so everything, mad. including repentance. Yeah, which I've, I've heard is a pretty good card against druid. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, so oh, he nice. needs the avenge on this six six here. Yeah, he needs one hundred percent. He can hit BGH. <laughs> oh, doesn't get it. Hmm. So he has six. Isn't four. I no, that's think. that. I don't think there's any out here unless I'm missing something. No, there's. You, so you can kill the two one with your face and let, be alive at one health, and then kill the four four with the druid of the claw. And then you have to kill at least two of the other minions, and you just can't do it. Yeah, I don't think there's any uh, combination of cards here that, that get him out of this. I don't even know there was necessarily a combination of cards that got him out of it if the avenge hit. Because then the challenger would go. Well, he has BGH, and then he can silence the four, uh, the um, the three three maybe, or kill off the two one with uh, the the uh, keeper of the grove. Yeah, I don't know. All right, Swifty gonna level things up with the secret paladin, and it's gonna be one to one. So, Spo, as we said, had the warrior and the warlock, uh, and you reckon the warrior would be a good pick pick here, patron, whether it's patron or control. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Um, I think uh, either one. Is, it depends what his warlock is as well, because I think Reno does pretty okay if that's you know if that's what he's gone with. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the warrior is just pro almost certainly the safest bet. If it's control, you play things like double brawl, you know, so you can just clear off the piling board and the executes are huge because it sort of negates avenge to a certain extent. Um, and then if it's patron, well, all the whirlwind effects do, do, do the same sort of job. All right. Well, we'll see what Spool decides to lock in here. As these players are getting ready for the next game. And here's the war warrior. Yeah, going with the warrior. Let's see if it's going to be patron or control. More than likely patron. Looks okay. like control. Mm, there you go. I would assume so then. With the revenge. Against the secret paladin. Well, this is a very interesting matchup because it does just... It, it really depends on the start from either side, right? Yeah, but this looks like super control heavy. Like, you know, the Bash Revenge. This is like the, the newer version of Control Warrior everyone's been seeing, and a lot of people actually have been playing uh, to quite a lot of success. So, um, even the just starting off with Bash is going to be pretty good. 
because although um you know the follow up secrets uh oh no because they're both noble sacrifice yeah. so you won't be able to do another secret unless he draws one and then just you just straight up bash it like you know it's uh gonna be feeling pretty good already drawing into the brawl uh so you know supposedly not like won the game or anything but in a good position he's not like whiffed the draws completely it's a really interesting decision from swifty because it's a really low value redemption target and you didn't see the fiery war so how afraid are you of bash is the question but it looks like the answer is pretty afraid of bash and that's obviously going to pay off for him as we can see well, yeah and i think the thing is having a three four is much better than having a uh, a one one yeah. Uh, as, as well, like a 2-3 and a 1-1. One, one. A 3-4 is just better because you're not as weak to other things. Um, and it still gets the secret down. So if it's removed, the secret keeper's still there. And normally if it's going to be removed from, like, say, a, a weapon, then, well, the Noble Sacrifice gets propped first. Then you gain a 2-1, and then you can still go again with the Noble Sacrifice. So seems okay. Bit of a withdraw from Swift. You're just getting Consecrate. But you can go into Shredder and maybe start stacking up stuff after that. Yeah, we'll see if Spoon. There's a Gore Howl. So this is a really interesting warrior deck with the Elise, which we saw from a, a couple of players in the recent Wombology tournament I was doing. Um, it's one of the things with this control race. So you play, as you say, you play like Double Brawl, you play Revenge, Whirlwind, Bash, all of the removal spells and all of the stall spells. And then you just play the Golden Monkey and all those spells get turned into legendaries. It's a bit like what we were talking about with the Priest. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I think... Hmm... Let me think. There's a chance that this could be... The problem with this is you really want to kill the Shredder before you brawl. So I think he just needs to attack, work out what these secrets are. It, if, like, it was Avenged, then you'd probably just slam brawl anyway. Um, but as it's not going, you, you'll see that it's not going to be Avenged, then you'll probably save off on the brawl and try and do something with maybe, like, Bash Revenge to kill off the, uh, the Secret Keeper. Well, that's just what I was going to say. Obviously, you can use Bash and Revenge to try and clear this off. You would still well, be well, you would left with either the secret keeper or the shredder. Yeah, you just leave the shredder up, I think. Yeah. Um. So you'd attack first, and what this does is this actually still leaves Elise up, which is important. Yeah. So you you attack and you trigger the noble sack and the redemption, and then you bash and revenge on on the secret keeper. It's actually going to bash first. This is. Uh, I'm not I mean, it's the same thing either way, right? Well, it's not because you trigger, you still, you now trigger the. Okay, yeah. So now you trigger the redemption on the secret keeper and have to trade with it. Whereas if you yeah. attack first, and you trigger the noble sack, so you leave the one one and the two one. Oh, sorry, you leave the one one alive. But yeah. if you've done it the other way, you trigger the noble sack first. It gets redeemed and you clear both off. So it's slightly w worse in terms of ordering. Yeah, it, but the thing is, it's it's playing around different secrets. That, yeah. That's the thing as well. So you know, you you are, sometimes you cannot you cannot play around like every combination of secret at the same time. So you have to just go for a play and just play around. You know, like the the worst one is actually the one you play around the most. But now he's going to play around or play into all of the secrets. Yeah. But this is actually going to be a, a pretty impressive brawl. I'm trying to think what. So what secret was he playing around by bashing and revenging first? I think he was trying to work out um, if it was like redemption and avenge, then he could potentially use the Elise to kill the smaller avenge target if it didn't hit the Shredder, for example. Okay. Um, and then, you know, like do it that way. But pretty sure this feels like attack brawl. Yeah, pretty sure we brawl here. The problem is, though, there's going to be there's two minions that are going to survive. So yeah. we'll see what You're um... going to have to hope you come out on the right oh. end of this. Oh, yeah, he's got the Noble Sacrifice, sorry. Oh, this is even better. Yeah, Noble Sacks in hand. Yeah, that's what I mean. He, did, he didn't have it active because he'd used yeah. one in the second one in hand. So let's see what he steals. Let's see. It's going to be the Sludge. Oh, it's the 4-4 Sludge. Oh, no. That's not bad. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. He got the better one. Uh, Yeah, I'm trying to think. Cause, cause, yeah, because the Shredder was played first, actually. So, yeah, the Cup Purse was an option. Yeah. He could have got that. Which well, that 3-3 three, three cut purse is still not going to be quite be enough to deal with it's this 4-4. The first time I've seen golden cut purse. Oh, really? Let's have a look at that. That's nice. You don't play with golden shredders all the time, man? That's no, cool. I don't, because I'm not a role player. Oh, okay. So I don't you mean you're just not a player? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, I, I have to keep some dignity and not have all golden cards, especially golden cards that are literally about to be retired from standard. Oh, yeah, but if you crafted them early, you've had some pretty good use out of those shredders being in almost every single deck for however long, a year. I, I got myself a golden Doctor Broom for Christmas. Nice. So I've had, I've had a few months of enjoyment of that. 
but uh, sadly that's going to get dusted for a new a legendary from the new expansion. Yeah. And the good thing now is with Swift, you actually seen the brawl. The odds on your opponent having the second one with still twenty one cards in deck, yeah, uh, are pretty low, right? So you can then further commit into a board. So and this hero power over the noble sacrifice is fine. You don't see there's no minions or weapons on board, so you'd rather have the token as opposed to playing the other secret. And the secret that's left is repentance. Yeah. So we have the Fiery Warx here to trade, and I guess you play the Shield Maiden? Yeah, the thing is, well, his Spone knows it's Repentance. Yeah, he's got to. So he can just throw... He, he would, this is not a turn you slam Boom, <laughs> uh, because you're fully aware of that Repentance. But now next turn, he can go into Boom Hero Power, or depending on what comes out, you know, like uh, Shield Block and uh, do, do whatever, depending on the draws. But Swifty is... Oh. I, hmm. I think you still just play Tyrion here. Hmm... Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I was just thinking, like, because you've seen Brawl, like, maybe Boom feels better just to get the damage on board, but Tyrion Dodge is big game hunter, so uh, it's probably better to just secure it even more and then follow up with Boom if anything, if, like, a second Brawl comes down or anything too crazy. So, does Spo go for the Shield Slam Goro Howl here to kill the Tyrion? That's the only way to get rid of it. I think... He can just play Boom well, yeah, no, so Brawl, he can, to be honest. He can Fiery War X, the Divine Shield, and then Shield Block Shield Slam instead. Yeah, but I think he just needs to Slam Boom. Because the this is the, the issue like we sort of have discussed before, where if you um if you don't play a minion and just deal with a Tyrion, give him a 5 attack weapon, you tank 6, potentially, and then get another 5 guaranteed with the minion still on board. Yeah. And he's not played any minions, right? So you're basically so, Pyroblasting ping your own face. Yeah, you just it's just... Okay, counterproductive, and, and just you just fall behind further. So I like the boom here, especially because boom bots can do some very very crazy things. We see Swifty trading with the Tyrion. Yeah, I think this is good. You use the divine shield to trade, and then he probably just slams boom mini bot. Um, and then th what this does is he's in no super rush. It's not like he could set up lethal for the following turn uh, if he just attack face, because then you'd leave boom up. And as I said, the boom bots can do some funky stuff. So uh, I like now just filling the board up again. You've used the Divine Shield, already Tyrion's done work, uh, and then you just fill the board up and you just say now, like, you either have a, an insane brawl and, like, brawl Harrison or something like that, or you um, or you need to do something pretty funky to deal with this board. Well, I reckon if he has second brawl, we'll see, we'll see Spo Shield block to try and try it. Hmm. Does he... Hmm... I mean, this is this boom bot's just gonna do nothing on this board. That's the frustration. I think he just has to shield block, um, and then depending on after that shield block, he could still just a car. Could shield block kill the Doctor Boom, and then just a car, just to get it down, like we said earlier, uh, and still shield slam. So that's uh, going to be pretty okay. Uh, but we'll see what he chooses to do here. I kind of like just removing boom, playing just a car, and hoping basically. So then you have Grom Revenge next turn. Yeah, you do have a finisher, and you've got the Fire War X as well, so you're not too far away from being able to deal lethal damage. Alright, let's see. Looks like he is going to go for the Shield Slam onto the Tyrion. Hmm. This is interesting, because you're, you're only removing one damage here. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, you're just... going to take... Three to face. Oh, oh he, he didn't, didn't get the justicar play. off. Oh my god, the, the stress, the stress levels must be insane. Yeah, and that's... that's seven, eight, nine to eleven, twelve. Is that just lethal? Uh, five, nine, another two. Oh. No, it's one oh. off. Yeah, but with Lothar, that's gonna lock out uh, any craziness from um, from uh, from Spo in terms of like revenge. Because how much damage did he actually have? He would have had uh, 30. He still wouldn't have had enough. He needs, so, uh, yeah. he needs to draw... Uh, There's know. nothing. There's do. nothing. There's nothing he can do. Nope. I, was I was trying to think of something crazy you could do with like multiple inner rages that are not in the deck. But with uh, Lothab, unfortunately, you can't do anything like that. So that's going to be a 2-1 lead for Swifty here. We have another upset potentially on our hands here, Raven. Yeah, and, and that's uh, the Warrior deck's pretty... I think it's pretty decent versus the Paladin, but... 
the thing is, he got enough like uh, frustrating death rattle effects and and just kept the momentum with the secrets. And that's when you see actually having secrets early sometimes isn't terrible because it can actually snowball you a bit, uh, you know, earlier on. So now this is hmm, it's gonna be Warlock, and it looks like it's gonna be some form of Reno most likely because we see the Empress of Anis, Sludge Belcher, etc. Um, it could still be something like just straight up Demon Lock or Hand Lock. Um, but you know, you gotta presume it's some form of, of Reno. Yeah, I would think so. Especially to see the Mortal Coil as well, I think. Just pretty yeah. uncommon in things like Handlock. And this always feels really bad when you're playing last year or standing that you at one one make a matchup choice and decide that one of your two remaining decks is better than the other. And then you lose that game anyway and you have to play the deck that you tried to avoid playing into this matchup before. And just like a little psychological thing. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel great. But uh, this definitely now is, is like Combo Reno, almost certainly. Um, and this, again, all he has to do here for Spo is wipe the board before turn six and then try and just keep it empty. Um, and at the moment, he only now just has that Shadow Flame to do it with. Uh, but this actual Twilight Drake is going to do some work, I think. Um, purely because it's a very difficult minion for the Paladin to remove without uh, the Keeper of Alderman. Yeah, we saw Holly yesterday with the Reno Lock being, having this uncanny skill to be able to draw a uh, faceless Molten Giant Taunt in, what, I think three straight games? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, three straight games. That was disgusting. Yeah, so you just coin the Twilight Drake here? or you uh, it It'll be now? one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll be a four, seven, so... It's okay. He could just uh, just play the Voidwalker and tap if he wants to. Uh, you know, he doesn't need to. You know, this board isn't going to kill him. You know, in uh, especially tapping to Reno, he's got to feel a lot safer now. Yeah, once you ta in an, an aggressive matchup with Reno Lock, just having the Reno in your hand early, it's, it's a little bit of a dead draw, obviously, for a few turns. But just having it feels so much better. Yeah, and this actually sets up for something like a uh, Twilight Drake coin Mortal Coil. As well, because the the juggler was almost always attacking into that void walker there, just because it lines up so well. And, and also, he didn't want the Drake out too early because he probably does want to shadow flame the Drake, uh, because there's not much else to uh, to deal with. But now there's a Hellfire oh. thing for change. So I like actually coil and then coin Hellfire. You like coil coin Hellfire? You don't want Hellfire and then coin coil to kill one of the one ones instead. Well, the issue is like, uh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's probably better. I'm just, I'm thinking of redemption. That's the yeah, actually, yeah, cute. Oh, that, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Yeah, because you could have coiled them, uh, the uh, juggler, brought it back, then, uh, then hellfire. Yeah, um, that's true. But again, it's one of those things where you know you can't play around everything. And um, if that was avenge, then this was probably the, the better play, um, because it actually wipes the whole board. So I'm not sure if everything gets anything it actually gets avenged there. Um, but the Mustafa Battle is going to refill the board. And, uh, hmm. Kind of interesting because he could actually abuse if Sergeant uh, Shadow Flame. Yeah. That's definitely. Which just option. leaves the 2 1 alive on board. I think it might be the best option here. Yeah, me. I wouldn't actually hate it whatsoever. No. Like, this, you've just seen he, there's one board wipe. The Paladin refills the board. He only has two cards in hand. So, uh, you just do it again. So, uh, this is pretty good. And with Reno in hand next turn, oh, he can even coin coil. Yeah, can coin the coil. This yeah, is perfect. pretty sick. And now with Reno in hand, this is this is exactly the board you want. It's the Warlock. Oh my God, and Demon Wrath as well. Okay. <laughs> Another board. Uh, so, so Spo did pretty well drawing the AOE this game, uh, but also like this this is the exact board you want because you slam Reno here. Well, he doesn't even have to slam Reno, especially after seeing Hero Power on turn six. No, you just this play is, the. This this is why this matchup is super difficult for the Paladin, because you have such little burst damage that if your opponent can clear your board, they don't need to Reno until they're super low. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this game relies on, can they wipe your board before turn 6? If they can, you need, like, Challenger into Boom, into whatever. Um, if they can't, then you just keep going and push past Reno heal. Uh, but this is so sick for the Warlock, because now, as you can see, there's no burst. He doesn't even need to play Reno. Um, he could probably still wait another turn, especially now that he's drawn Sludge Belcher, so we could, like, Sludge Belcher tap still, um, and, and then Reno the following turn with a life tap. Such dead draws here for Swifty. The Cog Hammer and then the Competitive Spirit. Really not good here. Um, yeah, you, as you see, Spool getting the Twilight Drake out now. 
Uh, yeah, you mentioned that this can this matchup can go the other way. It can go the same way as the the Druid matchup against Reno Lock in that you just have the board. You have so much power on the board that they have to Reno because they're going to die, and then they can't clear anything because they've Reno they've used all their money on Reno, and then you win the game the next turn anyway. So all Reno does is delay you by a turn or two. Yeah, exactly. And um, but this uh, I mean, I just wouldn't mind Hero Power Belcher here. And he's going to go for the safe play, which is fine. He's ahead, so you may as well just stay super ahead. Uh, he has, like, Argus. He, he, he can even, like, if he really wants to, implosion Argus next turn to create some smaller taunts. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, this is just a safer play as opposed to being a bit too risky because maybe then if there's, like, an owl, you could be in trouble. Another dead draw for Swifty here, picking up the Noble Sacrifice, Ooh. but it's okay because he has Tyrion. Yeah, I'm just waiting at whether he just faces us as the Tyrion. I mean, that's certainly a play. Uh, there's, there's also Siphon Soul for the Tyrion. But... Yeah, but when you have your own Tyrion, when you're this far ahead... Feels yeah, good. <laughs> there's but... definitely... I definitely think there's uh, a lot of merit in Faceless in the Tyrion. Yeah. Like if, you give your, yeah if you give your opponent a 5 attack weapon, you do give them a lot of opportunities to come back, I think. So... Yeah, well, I think you can pretty safely, like, Faceless the Tyrion... And then just go face. You can still drop the Ink Gang boss as well. You can't go and face. Then... Oh, so I mean like attack. Just yeah. like you don't try and kill the Tyrion, you just kill attack to see what happens. Um, well, you can't kill any, can you? You can kill the Tutu. How? With the uh, the two, with the four six and the four eight. If there's no noble sack. But. <laughs> but there's a noble sack. Yes, exactly. So uh, he's just gonna go with the the play of the the siphon soul, but um. But yeah, you, um, this is fine. Uh, again, I personally probably would have gone for the Tyrion just for fun value, but just because you could have dropped the Tyrion, uh, you could have got your own Tyrion, got your gang boss, and then next turn you have like Defender of Argus, Sludge Belt, uh, you know, like so much wall that the Paladin just won't be able to hit through, and you're ahead on board anyway. And Swifty is showing why uh, people didn't necessarily think Secret Paladin was going to be a good thing, because sometimes you just keep drawing secrets. And you don't want to play them when you're on turn 9. Yeah. Here's an interesting question. If you play Faceless on a board with Repentance, do you keep the copied minion's health, or does it get Repentance down to 1? That's a good question. Yeah, I actually don't know at all. I'm rubbish with this trivia. It's not <laughs> stone trivia. Alright, well he's going to Demon Wrath here to clear the board. Yeah, and we're probably going to see either Belch or Argus. So, you know what? He could just drop Sylvanas again. Like, there's no burst, so you don't really care. You could just drop Sylvanas and then go for maybe a uh, Argus next turn. Oh, tap Argus, yeah. And, and this is the position where it's the Warlock. You have so many options, so many cards, you can pretty much do what you like. And the Argus does play into Repentance as well. Well, please, it gives you a, a proc for Repentance. Second yeah, I mean, e uh, yeah, even with the Sylvanas, though, like, what what are they going to do? Like, attack into Sylvanas on one health with a five attack weapon? You know, like, there, you know, we could see this Consecrate there, which would do some work. But yeah, th this is probably just the overall safest play. So many terrible draws for Swifty here. I mean, the, the but, Secret Paladin is a deck which is often criticized for just being able to draw and curve perfectly every single game. But this is the other side of what can happen to Secret Paladin. Yeah, because late game, the Warlock's draws are still amazing, whereas the top decks well, from Secret Paladin are, um, aren't great at all. Uh, like, there's so many low drops that help you early game, but are completely useless late game. I love that, just as you said, that the uh, Warlock's top decks are really great into the late game. He top decked Zombie Chow. Hey, man, Zombie, Chow, Zombie Chow's still good versus aggro. It's still good, but it's not exactly what you want a top deck on turn 11. Well, he already has 15 million good cards, it's so, true. you know, you, you can save the but even like, you know, like Chow Argus or something like that, you don't care about your yeah. opponent's health in this situation. You just don't die and then you win. Well, that's the thing that, the, you know, another play that was potentially a good option for Spo there was uh, Sludge Belcher Faceless. Because how does your opponent get through two Sludge Belchers? Well, there's a Divine Favor. So we're going to see some, hopefully, some good cards drawn finally. Yeah, I mean, the tough thing is, like, He's definitely not dead yet, but just look at the power of spells. All he needs to do is draw his arcane golem. Yeah. Oh, hang on, six, seven. Is he? Oh no, he just wins next turn unless there's a taunt. 
Yeah, because there's power overwhelming on Dart Bomb. There's a Sludge Belcher, but can't be played. And well, gets the Doctor Boom, gets a Shredder. The Muster is the only thing he's going to be able to play here, I guess. So you can kill off the 1 1. Yeah, you're still dead. So Spo is going to be able to take the re level up this matchup here at 2 to 2. And it'll be the Reno Lock against the Druid. Yeah, so again, a bit of a tough match, probably more tough than the Secret Paladin match, in my opinion, because the Druid can still, like, draw better later in the game versus the Secret Paladin, uh, as we just discussed. And also the Druid has the burst combo that the Paladin definitely doesn't. So, um, yeah, uh, this is going to be a slightly harder game for Spo, mm -hmm. um, but still completely doable. Yeah, I mean, this is one we saw go either way, I think, yesterday. Uh, in our matches, and uh, yeah, as we like we talked about, you can just build up a huge board with the druid, which is not, which is just unkillable by the the warlock. And if the even if the Reno with that board up, you can still just generally like savage war on a huge board or combo on a huge board, or just have enough damage on board to win anyway. Yeah, exactly. And um, this is uh, the demon wrath. It's okay. Deal with living roots early on. Uh, and you know may maybe help out with a uh, a dinosaur's aspirant, um, but yeah, the demon wrath keeps pretty interesting. Probably just wants the removal, just like again, just 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 to lock out living roots. Kind of a strange keep though. Yeah, I mean, I guess he figures he just needs some removal early on, but yeah, it, do it doesn't deal with anything except well, I guess shade as well. Oh uh, yeah, that's true actually. It, do it does count. It, it just I'll, I'll give you that one. one. I'll give you that one. It's a one for one with shade. Uh, which we are we are going to see shade potentially next turn. So, uh, see, Spool opting not for the not to go for the mortar coil on the one ones. Yep, yeah, uh, they're not. That, yeah, they're not too much of a threat, and it looks like Swifty's playing a. This is an interesting one actually. It's either aggro druid, but with just um, a bad early start. Um, or it's just actually just Druid with Raptors, but I imagine it is actually just Aggro Druid, yeah, um, you just you not drawn any of the early stuff. You wouldn't play Shade and Raptors, I don't think, would you? If you're playing uh, Revenge? I don't That's know. Common. Yeah, oh, it's uncommon, but you know, it's not like completely crazy. Um, I think it's still okay, but, but we'll see how it performs, because I'm, I'm interested now, like, oh, well, you, you wouldn't play Wild Growth in, in uh, do you play Wild Growth in Aggro Druid? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think you do. I've not played a lot of Aggro Druid, no. to be honest. So my, my lack of knowledge is, is pretty lame there. But um, but yeah, I don't think so. So maybe he just likes Mounted Raptor. Do you just Dark Bomb the Raptor here? I, I was wondering if Spool was going to Dark Bomb and then and then potentially Mortal Coil the the one drop if it was if he was able to. Mm. So I might have held off on the tap there. Well, the thing is, the, the idea is because it's a one drop and you're on 24 health, is it, you know, like, is it that much of an issue? Like, are you scared of, a, a you know, that two attack? Like, oh no, you know, whereas, like, on, you know, he can maybe do something with, like, a Shadow Flame or something later. So, he does end up calling it this turn, which means he has the mana to drop a oh. Piloted Shredder, which was a pretty reasonable top deck there. That's, that's pretty sick. Yeah. Alright, this Coming is almost up. certainly just mid-range Druid with Mounted Raptor and Shade. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So now, I want to see the Shredder into the Shredder and double Doom set. Living Roots as well. I'm just trying. It's this is one of those decks, and you see them sometimes when you're casting that you're like, has he found a way to make a 35 card deck? Because we've seen Living Roots, Shade, and Mounted Raptor. Ah, yeah, but like Living Roots is pretty common regardless. You play it in both Druid, uh, but like he could play one Shade, one Raptor. That's true. Like, that's com that's completely fine. Like it's just a, a, a sort of a style pick more than anything. Yeah, I mean, I know there were a lot of people who... There's, there have been periods of a lot of things coming in and out of Druid, and Shade was one of those things which did go out for a little while, but I think it was also... A lot of that was because people were being too greedy with them. Yeah. And were thinking, well, I'm, I'm not ever getting any use out of this card, but it's because they were being too greedy. So the silence might actually be okay here. If you just silence on the Shredder and trade, um, then you end up with the, you know, the, the better side of the board. But I think you do... Uh oh it's kind of weird that then, like, he didn't trade there because I just feel like you silence, but then you can still get a good trade into the Keep of the Grove. Yeah, that's a little bit odd. But I guess he just wants to protect the Shredder against any AoE, something like a, a Shadow Flame. 
don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's still fine. What he's doing is just being aggressive. He does have Swipe and uh, Savage Roar in hand. Um, so, you know, he's just presenting that awkward health where it's like, if you have Reno, do you really want to play it on 18? No, is the answer. Sorry, was that a rhetorical question? Uh, well, you can answer if you want. <laughs> so, Sylvanas coming down. Chris Bow just trying to threaten it. Yeah, it does take the better trade on the Keeper of the Grove. So, Swifty gains a little bit of damage there, I guess. Being able to... With with not trading. And, uh, well, the Emperor for Swifty is pretty nice. Gets a discount on... Uh, on Swipe and Savage War as well as the Doctor Broom. Yeah, the only scary thing is, like, he could potentially steal the Emperor. Yeah, uh, that's true. Spo could use Sylvanas to steal the Emperor. So, a little bit ropey here. Um, but we'll see what happens. It's kind of a tough one. I... Hmm. Maybe even you trade into Sylvanas, see what comes out, and then swipe face. I don't know. It's kind of rough. Yeah, I mean, it's the best you're going to have, but obviously... Oh! One oh my shit. god. Feels bad, man. Oh my god, that's insane. That almost feels like... And it's okay, because you can kill it, but it's just frustrating. It's a yeah. one health minion that you have to face tank. Well, at least you can kill it and clear the board, I guess. I mean, like I say, it's not terrible, but it's just like, ugh. <laughs> you know, it, you can kill it as a bonus, but you probably prefer it to have, uh, you know, maybe maybe less attack if he has to face tank it. Well, there's a taunt, like we were talking about earlier, Molten Giant Taunt is an option here. Uh, Twilight Drake Taunt as well. Is any kind of defensive move from Spo? Also, Antique Healbot Taunt if he wants, if he feels a little bit in danger. Of something yeah, like I think even like level. Tap Molten Taunt is good. Yeah, that's true. So you can, yeah, you can tap and then. Because you you're not going to get comboed, right? Yeah. Oh, like you know, yeah, okay, there could be an evade combo, fine. But you're like, you're not realistically going to get comboed and through the Molten Taunt. So the worst is going to be BGH, which leaves your opponent with four mana, and the four mana follow up isn't that big. And also, this like, if your opponent can't deal with this, you slowly crawl in towards like Alex Straza in your opponent's face on that's on twenty seven. Yeah, which feels kind of nice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> the VGH top. Reasonable, tank. reasonable. He can even heal bot. Oh my yeah. god. You can BGH in the so heal bot. I think you run the two three into the one one. Yeah. And then uh, BGH heal bot. I think. I think it's fine. It's fine to play. It's fine to play the heal bot first as well because you've got a better chance of defending the molten giant. So I actually like this ordering. Oh, feels bad the healbot got wrecked. Yeah. Well, it did its job. I, I, I do like I'm this. I'm sure it did job. not sign up on the job application. Heal, then get destroyed by a boom bot. It's a robot, Alex. It doesn't have feelings. It, it's holding a little heart. How can you say it doesn't have feelings? <laughs> oh my god, Callum, you vicious person. I'm a monster. What can I say? So now, Swifties pretty much needs to draw into a BGH of his own. Innovate. Not going to help. Can he Wrath Innovate Savage Raw? No. Oh my god. So, there's currently 10, 12 damage on board. Uh, well, 12 damage with the uh, with the abusive. So. Um, so, not quite lethal yet for the Warlock uh, of Spo, but, you know, they're certainly getting close. These Druid cards just won't go away. Yeah, they'll shift in a second. Yeah, there we they go. go. <laughs> they take their time. It's not as bad as the the previous spectator druid bug, where every time there was a choose one, you would have to restart your spectate. Yeah, that was a little bit worse, I must admit. That was a little bit, I, I actually think you and I were doing a tournament together when that was a thing that you were producing, if I remember rightly. Uh, yep. Yep. It was uh, not the most fun I've ever had, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey-ho. And this, this is really nice, and this is just like the power of some slightly underrated cards to like the naked eye that like abusive sergeant is actually an insane card because the trade up potential is so good like that two three taunted up the molten did an attack and then actually killed an azure drake and guarded the health on the molten giant so pretty pretty damn big and now it's looking like uh, savage raw sorry and swipe is going to be a, a requirement here and uh hope to god that the boom bot does some work it's also the the underrated power of the the cheap minions in Reno Lock to be able to fill out your mana curve and make you as efficient as possible. 
Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, if there's ever a deck, and it, it explains also sort of the combination of why you would play Ooze over Harrison, because in Reno and any like sort of top top end warlock deck, you actually always have like a lot of options and cards and mana to, to deal with stuff. So you use like the, the small minions to, as you said, really just fill out your curve and get the most out of every single turn, which is what Warlock like truly excels at. And that's why uh, that's why Reno Lock is such a terrifying deck. Is it just has, uh, you know, it feels like it has the nuts on every turn, right? It just has the uh, the answer for every situation, which is crazy. It shouldn't have because there's only one ofs. There's no two ofs, but somehow it feels like it just does well every single game. Yeah, well, the thing is, and the reason Reno Lot works is that although they're running one offs, they're still running three to four AOE spells. You know, like three four, or to four four drops, three to four five drops. You know, stuff like that. So although the singular minions are, are, um, are unique, like you do run multiple of, of the slots and of the tools you require, which is why it still and, and continues to be a pretty damn strong deck. Absolutely. So Spool getting the win. Cat, what is your problem? Spool getting the win there. And uh, yeah, he's going to advance to the round of 16. And we're going to try and uh, get straight into our round of 16 games because uh, we are the the round of 16 is supposed to start. We're right on time here, Alex. So, oh, you know, perfect, pretty easy, pretty easy. Just need to find his uh, Hoy's opponent, and uh, I'll I'll get that done. So if you just give me, if you can fill for me for a second there, Alex. Of course. So. Uh...